basically 24 7 i've been learning about permaculture for the past four and a half years now i'm doing design work so now i have my own design system and i'm also developing that through the use of ai technology <laughs> hello welcome to the permaculture vine podcast where we talk about permaculture people and projects uh, I'm your host, Cormac Harkin, and today we have Travis Wholesome on the show. Welcome, Travis. Hey, how you doing, Cormac? All good, thanks. Thanks very much for agreeing to come on and uh, chat this. Do you want to just give, uh, for people who don't know you, a quick introduction, please? Yeah, hey, I'm Travis Wholesome, and um, currently I, I have a, I'm owner of Food Forest Design Solutions, and also uh, I'm a partner in foodforestabundance.com. And I am a uh, permaculture designer and installation company here in Minnesota. And uh, that's what we're here to talk about today, right? Yeah, well, uh, that's right. We'll get, we'll get to all that. First of all, I'll start with you. Uh, so I understand you were a web developer before. Yes. Do you want to yes. just tell you how your story from being a, a web developer, uh, how do you get into permaculture? Yes. Uh, so back in... 1998 is I wanted to be uh, work for myself. I didn't want to work for anybody. And so I thought the only way to do that is to buy a computer, build websites, start making money online, right? So basically that's, I, I was a bartender and I would throw all my change at the end of the night in a bucket when I got home. And after six months, I have $4,000 in change. So I bought my first computer. A friend built it for me, and I decide and I became a web developer. So this is back when Google was born in 1998. So I've been doing web development and search engine optimization since 1998, when Google was just a baby. And uh, so I built websites for you know hundreds of websites in that time. I also do graphic design. Um, and, you know, like search engine optimization and many, many years I deal with different people and different businesses and dealt with uh, many, many startup companies. And uh, back in high school, I was a wrestler and I met uh, a guy named Jim Gale. Uh, and we became friends back in about 1986 or 1987. And um, he, Jim, did his thing after high school, went to college, became an All-American wrestler, and moved on, became successful in a company. And then I did my thing. And then uh, how many years later, 20 years later, we linked back up. And I'd say 2011. Um, and I was still doing my web development and everything, and I saw a design of a uh, greenhouse called the Permacube, which was a 100% off-grid greenhouse uh, system that you would put in your backyard that had uh, aquaponics, hydroponics, had a chicken tractor, had solar, uh, water catchment. It was an amazing uh, greenhouse system and once I saw the design of that and I always liked to to grow stuff I used to wa love to watch vegetables grow from seed to a plant but once I saw this I it changed my life just seeing a picture of this because I'm like imagine everybody growing food in their backyards in one of these in Minnesota all year round um, so I contacted Jim and we started to collaborate on this and and uh, you know it became too expensive to manufacture so it never we never could bring it to market and then there were some other versions of it and then we come to uh, 20, 20 COVID we come to COVID and uh, and Jim called me and he was he had a store in the mall in a shopping mall and that's when they shut everything down and 
he was out of business. They shut the malls down and he couldn't go in them anymore. So he had to completely shut down his business. He calls me and Food Force Abundance was born. Um, and from that day in 2020, I became, I started to learn about permaculture. I built the website uh, for the company and basically 24 seven, I've been learning about permaculture for the past four and a half years. Um, building a website, building that business, and now running my design and installation business here in Minnesota now. So long story short, that's how I arrived at um, this part of my mission, and which is to grow food everywhere and, you know, food security for everybody. I think that's everybody should be able to have that. And yeah, or at least one, or at least, or at least a, uh, a significant percentage of it. Uh, yes. And then uh, as a community being self-sufficient. Yes, I think that's exactly. Def definitely the way to go. Uh, yeah. Right. So um, you're now, you're a landscaper as well, or not a landscaper, a, a food forest installer. Yes, yes, I do. So now I, I also design also. Uh, so uh, in the when I started, I was just an installer. You know, I've actually installed one of your designs, one of my first. Yep. And that's always going to hold a special place in my heart because it was one of my first installs and i get to go back and check this place out every spring and whenever i want and uh yeah so oh yeah, is that, and i started so, oh go ahead go ahead all right so let's stick with it so you, before the design so you, you done that, that install what's it like working with a remote designer like me here and you there and then you just get this blueprint <laughs> it's like hey, oh, it, work, it, work away. that was i yeah. didn't know any different because I've never been in this type of business before. So I'm just, I'm a rookie at this. I'm trying to learn everything as I go. Um, Food Force Abundance, was, you know, started that company from just Jim and I. And then next thing you know, we got 50 people, you know, 50 designers to worry about, right? And give designs to and, and a lot of different moving parts. And... So I didn't know, I didn't have a mentor or anything to learn how to build this business. And, and, and so I didn't know any different. So working with someone over Zoom, it's just, it would be much better to work in person, obviously, because you can see face to face and you can both walk the property together and stuff like that. But um, I've got, that's the only way I've known. So I've learned that way. So yeah, you uh, just you just get on with. <laughs> yeah, and and I can go. Uh -huh. I have a GoPro, you know, so I can go right to the property and I can film or I can be live at the property with you or Graham, uh, who has designed for me. Also, uh, did his designs, installed them, and I can get on the phone right at the property and ask ask questions. Okay, how you put this in the design? Why did you put this here? You know. Because here I'm at the property now, and here's what it actually looks like, you know. Because, yeah. you know, I'm your eyes and ears on the ground at the property as a remote designer. Which, uh, so, you know, it, it works. It, it yeah. can work. I think I'm fair to say that the process was in place okay. Uh, I think it works. It's okay for, like, uh, urban, garden, uh, urban gardens. I think it's fine. And it's good to get people off the off the grass and on the yeah. food production. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes a challenge then when the site expands, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think uh. you have to be more on site for that. Um, but if the client is paying for it, you know, hey, I'll, I'll you know, let's fly, come and fly in for the week or whatever, you know, and that way, like uh, Graham Towers, and he lives in Michigan. He's a six and a half, seven hour drive, maybe eight from me. And he used to work uh, about a half an hour from me in Minnesota here at one time at a refinery. So he knows this area well. If I ever need him, he'll drive right down and come right on site with me. So 
I have that in my back pocket at all times. And, you know, he's an amazing designer. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, he, uh, he's, been, he's been doing it a while. Uh, yeah. And he's an uh, engineer, you know, and he, so he knows, he knows water, water management very well. You know, he's really great with that. And I've had some issues with water at some properties and he's the one I call to uh, design my water management. You know, all the swales, all that stuff. And uh, so it's nice to have him and have him close. But with the uh, designers that have, uh, con you know, connected themselves to Food Force Abundance, there's so many amazing designers all over the place, all over the country and Canada. And, you know, you're over there. And now to have access to everybody, you know, because I love to send design work to whoever wherever they live, you know, and, uh, yeah, one of, one of the, help yeah, anybody. Yeah. One of the, one of the best benefits for working for food force, the one of the, is the network is there. And yeah. you see, you can, there's, there's people with different expertise everywhere. So it's, you can call on it. Uh, and that's one of the big things about becoming a designer and install is building that network up. So if you're not with food force, the abundance is finding the right people with the right skills and the right expertise. And, and you know, having you, you said that, you know, having access to this network and people from all different backgrounds. Um, when we did the install at uh, Adrian Grenier's place down in Texas uh, at the Kintsugi Ranch, we had 30 in co-op installers that have never done a food forest install fly to texas for the week and do that installation with us and we had 30 different people from 30 different walks of life with all different skill sets some were masons some were carpenters you know every everything some drove heavy equipment so when everybody came together to do that install nobody met each other before Everybody came together on a Monday, started this design, finished on Wednesday, and it was filmed the entire time. And everybody put, it was the most amazing thing I've ever witnessed to see all these people come together, not knowing each other, getting chills right now talking about it. Because it just, it left an impression on me to watch 30 people with a common goal to get this install done, never having done it before and wanting to learn, there wasn't one argument. There was no static or negativity from any person at any time for that entire week. The energy was like nothing I've ever seen before. And we took the backyard at Adrian Grenier's place. On my website, you can go to the, the image gallery and you can see the before and afters. But we took this property and in a few days, what we turned it into, you know, it was amazing. And to have all these people together and, and to make a, a TV pilot at the same time, you know, and to be able to go in another state and collaborate and get all the resources to get this installation done was just mind blowing that we did this. And, three days you know uh, yeah I've seen, was, I've seen I, i've seen the trailer yeah and but that was uh what permaculture is all about and community is all about everybody pitched in and gave the women that came they were busting ass like working their tails off and man i was so impressed like with everybody and it was, it was an amazing ex experience to see and adrian grenier is a great great guy i mean yeah uh, yeah he, he's an awesome guy uh, he, he just just uh, great guy man uh, you know and his fiance at the time i think they're married now um but she was amazing and uh, you know we put a a medicine wheel in the backyard for her because she was getting involved in chinese herbal medicines so we planted out that uh, medicine wheel with all the herbs and stuff. And then there was a seating area. Um, 
I think Chad Johnson built a trellis in there, or uh, not a trellis. I'm thinking of something else. Um, um, a terrace. Sorry, he built a terrace, and uh, and then behind it put some banana trees, and and then oh, it's just an amazing place to sit and read. And it was just, and then there was a bench in the corner, and then there was a a, a cattle panel. Uh, tunnel trellis at the entrance. So you bend the cattle panel over, and then all everything's going to trellis up, and there's going to be this beautiful tunnel to get in to the the medicine wheel area. Man, and it's just sounds lovely. It, it was awesome. And then we put a vineyard in, you know, four or five rows of grapes, and I think we had fifty grape trees or grape vines that we put in. You know, beautiful um vineyard and what's that method called where you uh you burn you burn the wood it's japanese it's a japanese method where you burn use a torch you know what i'm talking about i uh, seen it on on uh tiny home programs yeah we did that <laughs> for the all the all the mm. posts for the trail the grape trellises and uh yeah but that was just it was amazing it was so cool and yeah what and it, it hooked me for life just to see everybody coming together and throughout my journey building this company for the past four years the relationships and the contacts and the people i have part of my circle now it's same thing it's all community you know and we're all we all have the same mindset for the most part you know and that's food for everybody you know and uh solving the the problems of the world through self-sustainability and you know regenerative landscapes and so, you know yeah so do you want to tell us now about your design how, how did you learn to design on the ground did you do a pdc did you just courses youtube or all i i well basically i had to learn because I, i'm building a website that i had no clue about but now i need to learn like every every website i built for a company i've had to learn their company to get in the mindset of a customer that's going to buy from them so i had to make content for that purpose so with, with food force abundance same thing i had to learn how to be a permaculture expert like boom. So all I did was learn. And then I did installs. Down I went down to Florida, did installs, went to Austin, Texas, did the uh Dell Big Tree show with Jim, the high wire show. Um uh, what, uh plant you know, abundance in your backyard or whatever it's called. Um and so I started learning and then I went through Bill Mollison's permaculture uh design course which is a 72 hour course, which has like 40, 42 videos on, it's Bill Molson and Jeff Lawton in a, I don't know if you've ever seen any of those videos of those two, but it's in a college setting with the big, big blackboard and they're writing in chalk, right? And drawing in colored chalk on the board and, and all these permaculture techniques and, you know, Bill Molson is the father of permaculture. So, to watch that funny old man, you know, laughing at his own jokes, man, when he's teaching permaculture was awesome. So I've watched all those videos and I got the certificate for getting through that. Um, and then I've done, I think about 14 or 15 installations now. Uh, so basically I've been learning by doing, and now that I've done so many, installs and every time i have a question i can call i can reach out to graham telegram hey what are you doing and i got a question for you bam you know and uh but learning on the fly and now i'm doing i have a designer here locally uh that i team up with his name's alex pop i don't know if you know him and he's got he's, a company he's, he's been on the show <laughs> oh okay cool yeah Alex, he, was, he, he, he was on for uh permaculture family permaculture uh, yes a few episodes ago 
Yeah, and, and Alex, he lives near me, and he's done some designs with me. So I always have him here. You know, he he's uh, – this is his life now, you know. He's permaculture. So – uh, yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him on uh, hopefully in a few weeks' time as well for the permaculture party. Yeah, because I know party he's for... got some good stuff going right now, and he's got yeah. you know permaculture party, you know, and so and we actually did well. Graham, Alex, and I and Graham worked on the project for uh, a tiny home village, sixteen tiny homes on a property, and they had water issues when it rained. They would just run right through the middle of their community garden and flood it so basically we had to redirect the water all the way around it with some rock ponds rock garden swales you know and planted a bunch of water loving uh, pollinator uh, plants in and then uh, beautiful man and but to work with them and now that I've done all these installs and I'm I've learned on every one and now I've started doing design too. And eventually I'll get my uh, PDC certificate officially, but I am I have the knowledge now that I'm, I'm comfortable doing designs, having, you know, cause anytime I, if I have something, I get stuck on something, I have someone I can go to that's gonna help me out. You know, someone that knows more than I do cause I'm not afraid to ask questions and, because I don't know everything and I'll never act like I do, you know, and because. Well, it's, I think it's important to say there too. It's, you don't, uh, having a PDC is great, but it's not essential. Yeah. You've got 15 installs. Somebody with a PDC might not have any installs and mightn't even have gardened before. <laughs> so it is. Yeah. Uh, everything's in some context. And I think, uh, like we've had Ian on here, head of design. Oh, uh, Ian. Ian was our first designer. Uh, he, and he uh, learned off of YouTube. Yeah, and uh, there's another guy too, Kerry Brown. He knows his knowledge is vast. Uh, yeah, and I would highly recommend him. He's in Tennessee. Uh, so to me, it's, it's not it shouldn't be a barrier, uh, especially because yeah. all, all the knowledge is free now online YouTube. I think it's yeah, yeah, and uh, there's so many experts out there to learn from too. Yeah, and, and uh, then find your niche, find your speciality as well. Yeah, and, uh, and now I'm I'm trying to reach out to landscape companies that do not do a, a food forest design, and I'm trying to get them to either become an affiliate of me to recommend me to their customers or add permaculture uh, design services to their you know business. They already have yeah. the, they already have the customers, you know. They might be they might have 50, 50 lawns they cut every week, and that's you know that's foot right in the door. Yeah. Uh, so Jose Jose Ansalega was on here, and he has a course as well on how to build a permaculture landscape company, and his model is what he does is he's the project manager and designer, mm -hmm. and then he he builds a team of landscapers around him, a okay. team of uh say uh, earthworks people and then he he coordinates the whole lot so okay. i think that's a great model oh i love that so, model yeah that means you're not you're not under pressure to do the design buy the plants do the install dig the hole it's spread amongst the team where you get in you get the job done and then you get out and then you're on so it's and uh, he ties in with landscapers and mm -hmm. then as they as they work with them then they're learning about permaculture exactly. and they're, they're yeah. then making that transition, hopefully away from traditional landscaping. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that too. And yeah, that's uh easy, easy for, it's an easy transition, you know, from normal landscaping to permaculture design and, you know, Hey, you can feel good instead of spraying poison all over the lawn after you get done. You know? Yeah, and you have something to eat at the end of the day as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got something, uh -huh. you know, it's given back to you, you know. And uh, so, yeah, and now I'm at the, the point, since I've been building this business from nothing, I had no idea. So I built it from an idea. 
I built the website and I had to figure out how to become an installer because I've never done it before and there was no one to teach me. So I created my own system on how to put estimates together. Uh, and now I'm doing design work. So now I have my own design system and I'm also developing that through the use of AI technology to streamline the design process to basically knock down your delivery time to your steward by about 60 to 65 percent you know and as the technology gets better or i'm able to integrate it more i'll be able to do that faster but without taking the human element out of it because you know the fun part for me is designing an ecosystem you know like you see a blank slate of someone's backyard and they say design me a food forest and all i do i send them a list of everything that grows in zone 4b and what's going to grow in their area you know and they pick out everything they want and now i get to take that and i'm an artist by nature you know i've been an artist so i get to take that and i get to have this blank canvas and i get to turn in uh, them a garden of eden for them in their backyard you know so i as i do every design i'm developing different techniques and different processes to make because i don't know any other way no one taught me how to be a designer you know so but i've been a graphic designer for over 20 years you know using photoshop illustrator everything so i've built my own icon database or icons to use in designs you know other than what uh, i know a lot of designers use affinity designer uh, for their design work and i was able to take the icon database out of that and put them in photoshop or download them in photoshop files and be able to use those but now the ones that i didn't have i've had to create my own so i'm building up an icon database to be able to use in designs um are you so, using photoshop so i'm using photoshop actually uh -huh. so i'm doing it in layers i get my google earth image and then i put a layer over the top of that and i outline the entire all the structures on the property the tree lines and then put another layer over, over the top of that and then do my design work over the top and then i can do each layer and then once i deliver the design to the steward they can see you know each layer of, of the process it took to design and then in my narrative i have ai generated images of what the property is going to look like when the uh food forest is in their backyard so an apple tree guild there's an image of an apple tree guild with mulch with all the supporting plants you know your comfrey your black-eyed susans and your bee balms and everything everything in the guild is right there fully grown the apple tree has apples on it it's in a yard natural looking mulch and you can see what you'll be able to imagine what it's going to look like in your backyard in a, a year or two so, so what 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 are you using to generate the Im images is that an online program just uh i do it through chat gpt right and i've developed my own uh prompt system to get the results i want um and i'm developing that every day and trying to make it better and uh just so i can give people they can see what is going to be in their backyard you know and that right. gives them i can put the garden of eden in their backyard for them and they can see it and you can almost touch it you know because you could see an image of it in their own backyard and it just yeah and yes then, so uh a lot of people are scared of ai um yeah. but i think it's important they sort of highlight the fact that you're going and you're talking to your clients 
So that's mm-hmm. a skill that you've picked up, 15 installs. You're out and about doing that. AI can never replace that. No. Nope. And, and then you're feeding that information into AI with the correct prompts to say, like, they wanted an apple tree guild. Will you they figure that out? And then by talking to them, you know whether they want two apples, three apples, four apples, guilds, and then mm-hmm. how they move through the property. So then AI is doing the donkey work for you, essentially, or the, the graft, and then it's just giving you that straight out. Yeah, yeah. And and it's also suggestion, suggesting every other option. You know, it's not giving me one choice for each layer. It's giving me four or five different plants for each layer. Yeah. So, you know, I can choose two, two here, two here, one here. Uh, but I'm trying to develop it where all your options come in and then you can just tap on the ones you want and boom, here's your guilt. And it's going to, you know, but everything will be uh, determined by your grow zone, the climate, you know, the climate and your soil type, um, you know, pest, pest, you know, deterrent. Uh, you know, every factor will be considered when it's put together, which, you know, and, and, and it does it instantly, you know, that is AI is scary for, you know, if you can, if you let your mind go there, it can be pretty scary with what it's probably going to be capable of in the future. We saw Terminator, um, (laughs) and that's, Hey, he came back in 2025, right? We're, we're getting that's... close. We, Twenty twenty five uh, is when Terminator came back. <laughs> nah, I think I think we're I think we're all right from ta- time travelers. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so, I think, but if you I think, use... we're, I think we're, we're we're on a one way street there. I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, using AI for to help put guilds together and do all this information, it, it's it just helps and speeds up the process. And once you get everything there, that if you have to change things up, it's so much easier to do once you already have, it, you know. Um, yeah. No, I think that's I think that's great. The only, the only on the flip side of that I would say is I have found so much out from researching just by accident. So say I'm looking for a certain uh, I don't know variety of apple tree, mm-hmm. and then when you get through it, it throws up stuff that you didn't. You went that you weren't looking for it. It's not relevant to what you're you're doing, but oh, mm-hmm. I remember. Oh, I could use that somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but that's 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 minor. Uh, so I would, I think it's I think it's a good thing if it's speeding it, speeding it up, and then you can but, get more, uh, more done, and you can you have can a bigger spend impact. More time on the imagination part. You yeah, know? and you're making yeah. a bigger impact by speeding up all that uh, sort of labor. Yeah, yeah, you're. It's yeah, and it's funny to call it labor because uh, you know people people equate labor with you know doing uh, some physical stuff, but uh, people don't realize what the, the you know what that takes out of your brain too. You know, labor is labor whether you're lifting uh, something, you know, shoveling, you know, rock, digging holes, or you're you're doing a design because you're. Using your mind like that can tire you out too. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh you have to you'll have to come back on in and give us a webinar when that, that gets up and running. It'd be great to see that. Yeah, oh yeah, I can't wait. That. Yeah, this whole winter I'll be spending uh, uh yeah, in making that uh system better and also uh an educational site for everybody to learn what I didn't know. So everything I had to learn from nothing, no one's going to have that problem ever again because I'm going to put it all into a package to where anyone who wants to get in to be a permaculture designer or installer will be able to just come and I'll take the learning curve out of the way. Step by step, here's how you, uh, once you get a design, here's what you do. You know, go walk the property, all, you know, taking your videos, pictures, and stuff like that. And then when it comes to putting your estimate together, uh, finding your resources to get trees, to get soil, to get mulch, 
um, and building up that network locally because I've done 15 installs, right? So I built a network in my area that I use now. They're, they're um, you know, I found the best garden soil guy in the Twin Cities area, you know? So I get an amazing compost soil mixture that is everything grows like crazy in it, you know? So I have an amazing soil guy. And then I get the wood chips for free, you know? I get all my malt for free. So I pass that savings on to the steward. And I can put more into everything else by saving them money on that. And all I do is pay for the delivery of the malt. And, uh, and there's so many different people that are independent growers, independent farmers that uh, had that grow fruit trees and berry bushes and nut trees and everything you can imagine, you know, all your pollinators, you know? And so now I know everywhere to go to get everything I need. So, and the stuff that does not grow here, eventually I'm gonna have a nursery and I'll be able to grow stuff that you normally, it does grow in zone 4B, but people don't carry it. The nurseries don't carry it or they're hard to find. And, but they're effective and beneficial to an ecosystem. So I wanna grow them and have them available, you know, locally and be able to provide all my own trees for all my designs, you know, or for all the installs. So, yeah, and, and so I want to be able to take someone that's a newbie and take them to and show them how to start their business and take all the guesswork out of the way. And yeah, uh, no, I think I think that's uh, definitely uh, worthwhile. Uh, ho hopefully, you'll let us add it onto our our PDCD Pro site uh, where we link to different courses like the Permaculture Business Design course. Uh, our, our own course, PDCD Pro. Uh, so if you are, hopefully when you get that sorted, you can uh, give us a wee affiliate a perfect, link. <laughs> that's a perfect, perfect uh, affiliate link right there. Say, if uh, you want to learn, if you want to take a PDC course, here you go, right yeah. here. So, hey, go go right to your uh, course. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not opposed to that at all, you know. Because uh, we, uh -huh. we all have our different ideas and everybody man to 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 meet all the different people i've met in the permaculture world everybody thinks differently everybody has different experiences because they live in different areas so they design differently for where they live you know so it's just i think uh, too it's a, it's a bring um Especially since politics all over the world has got so uh, divided, and mm -hmm. and so it's permaculture as a tool that anybody can use. Yes. And then when you build these spaces, people to come together and eat food, grow food. Uh, and, hopefully, that yeah. that that could be one of the things that bridges that gap. I think mm -hmm. permaculture puts you above the government. Yeah. You know, you have no need for the government when you have a permaculture system you know if you have a food forest in your yard or like uh if you have a property where you have all your food growing and you got animals you, you got a little bit of livestock you got chickens you got your bees you have water a water source with fish nearby and you're you don't need anything you can live free with no um, need no need for government involvement at all, you know, you know, and you get the, you're, you're eating healthy food. You're not eating Mr. Bill Gates sprayed fruit and vegetables in the stores. I mean, uh, the chemicals yeah, they, just, they spray on these uh, foods and, and people don't even realize it. They're sick because of the food they're eating. And uh, 20% of the food in your grocery store in the United States is real. But that comes with a price also because 
it's real food, but it's also sprayed with chemicals. And the meat, the way they mix this meat up, the burger meat, uh, you know, hamburger, and it's not safe. Chicken, all the stuff you buy in a convenience store is full of chemicals to keep it to to make the chickens fatter. So they're you got bigger breasts, you know, and but all the food is sprayed because so it can survive the trip it gets after it's picked off the plant, it's put on a truck and shipped to the store. You know. And you as well, you, you and, and growing your own, you can find two fruits that don't travel, yes. but grow really well in your area. Uh, yeah. We have a thing here I just discovered recently. It's called a Himalayan honeysuckle, Ooh. and it's growing everywhere. And it's it's like we be beads of chocolate, and it tastes like chocolate. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's it's lovely. Uh, nice. It grows like it grows like a wee, but it doesn't. It, it it basically explodes in your hand. Oh wow! So there's no way you could transport it to get it in the shop. So it's just uh, so, so I'm out picking away at them. Uh, oh, yeah, and and the, the the solution is local. Locally produced food, period. You know, yeah. and you know where it's coming from. Everybody can get involved. And then if there's food growing everywhere in the community, then nobody's going to worry about food because it's everywhere. You can walk around in your neighborhood and every tree that's along the street is a fruit tree or a berry bush or some herb growing, a medicinal plant. You know, everything has a pur you know, a purpose instead of these ornamental trees that do nothing, you know, but provide shade in a neighborhood. And then people get mad because they have leaves all over their yard, so they rake them up and they get rid of them. Don't start. Everyone, <laughs> Don't get me you know, started. And, yeah. And, and <laughs> I, I see, I want to start a citywide compost program. Yeah. You know, instead of if you're going to throw them away, or you either, the city provides compost bins for every home so they can throw all their waste in a compost bin and make their own compost or else the city or town comes and picks up the compost and brings it to a central location where there, there's a compost area. Yeah, uh, so, so we, we, have, we, we have a brown bin here. We've had it for years. Uh, okay. So basically you put all your, uh, well, I don't put any, I don't let, any garden waste go off site. Okay. Uh, oh so yeah. I, 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 I use it, but then I put my food waste, like the cooked chicken, pasta mm -hmm. cooked stuff that may attract rodents. Uh, I know you can deal with it properly, but it's just a step too far for management for me. Mm -hmm. So I just get rid of that. But anything like my uh, vegetable scraps going the uncooked stuff goes in the compost heap. But if you don't do that, <clears throat> our city collects everything. Compost it and then uh, yeah, produce this compost, which they give away uh, once or twice a year. Uh, and yeah, you go to your local skip and, and collect it. The landfills would, the the amount of stuff going in the landfills would be complete. It, it'd be reduced by 50% easily. Yeah. And you even know? the, so I used to collect coffee grounds from a local coffee shop. I, yeah, I, I, do, I do it in a heady. And the gears just they like it because they didn't have to carry this big bag full of coffee and yeah. take it in the car and take it to the bin. So instead, I just picked it up and composted it. So yeah, it was, and uh, that's a great that's a great soil builder, you know. Yeah, and, and I use all my own coffee grounds. I save them up every week, and I live in a townhouse, so I don't have a big big yard or big property to grow on right now. I got a ten by ten concrete patio, and I have like forty trees on it. You know, <laughs> I got so much stuff out uh, there, and, and but I save up my coffee grounds, my eggshells, and my scraps, and I throw all that stuff in all my pots because everything's in pots out there, and just everything goes crazy. And and yeah, banana trees that grow outside right now they'll be coming in soon because it's starting to get cold again because uh, fall, the fall season. Uh, yeah, I, have about, I have about one more month of work outside before the ground freezes. Maybe maybe about five weeks. Uh, last year I worked up till Thanksgiving before the ground was frozen. Uh, 
So hopefully I can get up there, you know, the best time to plant is in the fall when the trees are already dormant, you know? Yeah. We get the hard, we get the hard frost. All the trees are dormant, put a dormant tree in the ground and they wake up in the spring just fine. And, uh, they, every all the trees I put in the ground in the fall that were dormant in the spring, they've all like the Blaine house that you designed. Just about 75% of the fruit trees had fruit on them the first spring. All the apricots, the peaches, the cherries, uh, the apple trees, every one of them had fruit on them that following spring. Um, yeah, so what I did with my, with my fruit trees was I, I know it was hard. Uh, there were two two year bare roots. So the third, and they went in the ground, and then the next two years, I picked all the fruit. So they, they developed really strong roots. And then I mm -hmm. I took fruit then and, and then me they, they, that much fruit one of them fell over. <laughs> 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 so that's a, that's a wee tip there as well. Uh Travis, it's been uh, great having you on. We'll definitely get you back on for uh, we do round tables as well. I don't know if oh. you've seen them where we no, just have a awesome. that'd be fun. Uh, where we just have a conversation between uh, four permaculturists and um, we just chat about a certain topic how permaculture is a solution so i think uh ai and permaculture might be a good topic uh, yeah because uh, i i love learning from other people especially because i'm a rookie as far as i'm concerned four years is nothing you know um so and then there's always something to learn and everybody that has more experience than me i love learning from them you know, and did you ever meet Chad Johnson? No. He 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 did the design for uh, Adrian Grenier's place down in in uh, Texas, but he's from Minnesota here, and he he lived with Sepp Holzer. Um, you know, Sepp Holzer is also yeah one of the kings of permaculture. You know, and he lived with Sepp for two or three years, and learn everything from him and then uh a lot of stuff that that sep didn't put in his permaculture how-to book he passed on to chad and another guy because he didn't put all his knowledge in his book but he passed on the stuff that he didn't give away for free to chad and this other guy so and then he died not too long after that i don't think so um but he learned from him and his knowledge of building microclimates up in duluth minnesota here where it's a lot colder than it is where i live and he's 100 percent off grid has been for 10 plus years i think he has 80 acres and his food forest is the most beautiful thing you'll ever see you know, so I learned from him and uh, we drove down to Adrian's place together from here. I went and picked him up and then we drove for 17 and a half hours. I got to pick his brain <laughs> and I learned, uh, I learned more about permaculture in that drive down there than I had known, uh, you know, just because he even told me a lot of stories about when he was living with Seth, you know, and, uh, oh, and he he's a mentor to me too. I can call him at any time. Hey, you know, because he's an expert up here in Zone Four B. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. And I also have a tour of his property on my YouTube channel. If you look for Food Force Abundance Minnesota on YouTube or Food Force Design Solutions on YouTube, you'll see my channel and. Uh, yeah, there's a tour of Chad's property. And yeah, we'll we'll put that link in the description, sure. Of yeah, the, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to and, you. Uh, we'll include that. I'll, I'll look forward to that myself. Uh, any final thoughts, Travis? Any links you'd like to share? Um, yeah, uh, just I'd love to. Yeah, my give send go link. Um, I am looking for people to. Uh, once you go there, you'll see I'm trying to raise money to not only for developing that software and that system, I am looking to uh, raise money to uh, start a permaculture farm um, and nursery. So I'm trying to get new uh, 
uh, equipment, a vehicle and trailer, and be able to have a nice home base to uh, work from and also be an educational site. So I can't do it alone. And I think we all need to do this together. And uh, if you can't support by coming in, uh, being part of a team, uh, hey, give five, 10 bucks or 20 bucks. And I know at Give, Send, Go, you can even send a prayer. And then I've actually, someone sent me one. And it was like totally unexpected and something I'd never experienced before, right? To get a text from Give, Send, Go and someone said a prayer for like a minute and a half that talked about my mission to put food for us everywhere, you know, and hey, I, you know, just praying about to be successful in doing that. So I don't know, it just kind of, that touched me that day, but yeah, support me there, uh, food for us everywhere. And then uh, if you want to, if you live in Minnesota or anywhere, uh, you want to get a design in your yard or your property uh, or you, your church, your community, your schools, um, or old folks' homes, senior homes, contact me. Uh, you can give me at Travis at foodforestabundance.com or just visit uh, foodforestdesign.solutions and we can have a consultation and build, you know, design the Garden of Eden in your backyard. And then That's we can great. also install it too, or you can do it yourself. Travis, thanks very much. Uh, it's been great chatting with you, and uh, we'll chat to you again soon. Yeah, it's been table. great catching up, and it was great. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Cheers. Cheers.